subscribe, like, comment, and hit the notification bell. Hi friends, how are y'all? Welcome to part three of my meal series. In the previous two parts, part one, I did five breakfast ideas. Part two, I did five lunch ideas. And so today is gonna be five dinner ideas. And just to clarify, I'm not gonna give five specific recipes, but rather these are meal ideas that can be custom, customized to your liking. So you can mix it up, but they're just the type of meals I've been eating for the past year and a half or so while on my weight loss journey using uh, Weight Watchers. But you don't have to be on Weight Watchers to use these ideas. It's just that's mainly how I've lost the majority of my weight. And I have lost about 35 pounds and I'm currently set to maintenance. But it was really interesting uh, preparing for this meal. I did not realize the types of meals I was eating most often. Um, when I wrote down my list, one through five, it was what I would assume. But then when I went to like review and pull the footage for it, they ranked different. And the fifth one actually even got bumped off and one moved up. But anyhow, let's get started. Okay, so my number one go-to dinner idea is super, super basic. And I actually didn't realize how often we did this, but it is a grilled meat, some type of grain, carb, that sort of thing, and a vegetable. I would say when I was reviewing my footage, we had that combo probably 40% of dinners. I, I was surprised. So what are some of the go-to proteins that I like to grill? Chicken for sure, because chicken zero points. So we do eat a lot of grilled chicken, but I vary it by putting different seasonings. Hang on, let me grab them. Okay, so I am out of one of my favorite seasonings and that's Zatar seasoning. So if you can find that, that is one of my go-tos. But two other ones I really enjoy are these two from Trader Joe's, citrusy garlic and chili lime. They're super flavorful and they really, you know, using a strong seasoning like this can take the direction of your meal. Like today, or not today, if I use chili lime, I'll lean more Mexican or if I do citrusy garlic, I typically will lean more Puerto Rican with this. And then also fajita seasoning. This, um, this brand, I love this brand. It's just, I use it even when I'm not using Mexican spice. Another one I like is this uh, sofrito. But the point here is you, yes, we eat a lot of grilled chicken, but it never tastes the same way because I'm seasoning different. So that is a real, real big go-to. Okay, uh, my second meat we grill most often is pork tenderloin, lean pork tenderloin. And I really love grilling pork tenderloin because we buy it at Costco and two pork tenderloins come in each packages. And so this is great. I season them different ways and grill them at the same time. And so I always have leftovers. So that package typically makes five to six servings depending on how big they are. So. If you're like me and you live a busy life, I don't have time to cook every night, so I need meals that will give me leftovers, and grilled pork tenderloin does that to me. And it's not that many points. I mean, obviously chicken's zero, so chicken's less, but grilled pork tenderloin is a go-to for mine. A few other things we do, we do do steak on occasion. I say probably once a month we have grilled steak. Uh, we both love red meat and probably had it way more often before I was on my health and fitness journey but I try to limit that. Another thing we like to grill is we do grill fish and just any type of white, um, strong fish. It can't be a delicate fish, obviously. But, so with the grilled meat, what do we have? Like I said, I on the nights we're grilling, I think we ate this way so often because it is so easy. So on those nights, I keep it simple in my side is I have three different types of rice. Sometimes I even may have more on hand. Rice is just super easy. I definitely, I have a rice maker and that makes it even simpler. You know, you measure it out, you wash your rice, and in 20 minutes you have perfect rice. So our go-to's, uh, which one is this? Sushi rice, I absolutely love sushi rice. If you haven't tried it yet, I highly suggest you try it. You don't have to eat sushi with it, obviously. Basmati rice, this is my husband's favorite, not my favorite. It's similar to jasmine, which is what we have here. We have brown jasmine rice here. And I think it's worth having more than one rice on hand. I like to mix it up. 
Another go-to is couscous, pearl couscous. We eat that quite a bit. Um, instant mashed potatoes. I rarely make homemade mashed potatoes anymore. I used to prior to WW, but I found that these come out to less points than if I add butter or cream. So I will still make homemade mashed potatoes, but it's rare I do. I now agree. I'm agreeing with myself. I don't prefer these. These aren't as good, but I would say nine times out of 10, if we're having mashed potatoes, we're having some type of instant potato just because of the convenience. Because I do work and, you know, I get home late. If I have to go through the whole mashed potato, I'm not take it. <laughs> Making whole mashed potatoes takes a while. So that's half the problem. If I do do it, it's on the weekend. Okay. And I also keep frozen rice on hand. This is specifically from Trader Joe's. It's exactly two cups, microwave for three minutes, and you have a bed of rice. Um, you can see, I love rice. <laughs> and I would say for most of these, these are six points for a cooked cup. I believe the couscous is the same. Different rice will vary, so make sure you scan it in and check those nutrition racks. But in general, it's six points. And I found with most of the instant potatoes, the serving size usually is a half a cup prepared. And they're anywhere from two to four points, depending on the brand. They can vary quite a bit, so you better scan them. Okay, so that gives you what our carb sides is. Oh, one other thing that I would say is probably what we eat most often, and I don't have it because we're out of it, is farro. I love farro. I found it a couple years ago, and something about the bite I just really, really enjoy. And I'll put some videos up. Um, when I cook the farro, it's like a rice, but it's slightly larger. And once it's done cooking, I like to wilt like a green, like a spinach or arugula in it and add like cherry tomatoes or mushrooms or something like that. So when we do that, that's our meal. Grilled pork tenderloin, farro with the vegetables stirred in. It's one of my go-tos. I absolutely love it. But if we don't add the vegetables to our, our starch, what we do is... Typically, we'll roast them. I would say Brussels sprouts. We, my husband and I, we absolutely love Brussels sprouts. We put these in the oven at 400 for around 20 minutes, just cut in half, side down. Um, you can also throw them in the air fryer. I like them both. I don't prefer one over the other. Another go-to is French, or French fries. Green beans. I was saying French-style green beans. We absolutely love those in the air fryer, especially if they're frozen ones. I'm out again. But if you just do frozen and you put some seeds, season them really, really heavily, like with ranch or something like that, throw them in the air fryer and just a little bit of Parmesan afterwards, they're delicious. But always, always keep some frozen vegetables on hand. I will be honest, I'm not a huge fan of frozen vegetables, haven't been most of my life and neither is my husband. But there are some that we found are higher quality than others. And I keep those on hand for sure. One of them I'll show you later, but it's going to be in a different portion of video. So I don't want to double dip, if you will. But I mean, I hate to be boring, but yes, we eat a ton of grilled meat with some type of carb or hydrate as a side and a vegetable. And typically we like that and you can vary it so much. And thankfully we're in Texas, so we get a lot of great grilling time. But I mean, I think it was 40 outside the other day and I grilled, so... It's doable. The number two spot, which surprised the heck out of me, is bowls. If you would have asked me, which actually I asked myself my top five meals when I made my list, it didn't even make the list. And then when I reviewed all the videos, I was like, holy crap, we eat a ton of bowls. So anyhow, which is funny, because like I don't like Chipotle, but yet Cobb is one of my favorite places, so maybe it does make it. Anyways, back to this video. If you want to follow someone that does amazing bowls, and she does a ton of them, Nikki gets fit. She's a great bowl girl. Okay, so bowls. What is the primary base in my bowl? I would say I'm really simple when it comes to my bowls, and there's only three bases I can think of. A bowl of lettuce, which, you know, it can be spinach, it can be arugula, some type of salad green bowl. And I don't say it's a salad because it has different toppings than a normal salad or rice. And when I do bowls, I never cook rice. It's either leftover rice or it's my microwavable. I don't know. That's just, 
ends up being how it is. I think because it makes the perfect amount, maybe. But the third thing we like to do a lot with bowls is grits. Uh, if you don't cook with grits, you should really try it. They're really yummy and they're low points. You can have a ton of grits for low points. So it makes a great base for a bowl. I can't tell you the exact amount, but it may be like three points for a cup or something. I don't know. They're really, really low. And a little goes a long way too. So, but what do we like to top our bowls with? I would say eight out of 10 times, sadly, it is grilled chicken, seasoned up a different way. However, actually that's probably not true. It's probably more like 50-50. We're either adding grilled chicken or shrimp. I didn't realize how often I use frozen shrimp that are in bags like this, specifically for bowls. And I'm assuming that's because it's really quick cooking. Like if I'm doing a better rice with shrimp, I can microwave this and cook these in almost the same amount of time. It took me a while to find a brand of frozen shrimp like this I like. I grew up around the Gulf, so I'm really picky about my shrimp. But this one's pretty good. They're pretty good. And they're you can have quite a few for zero points as well. I don't know if they go up to points anytime or not. I always count my shrimp as zero, so I could be wrong on that. Okay, but that's pointless. To me, what makes a big good bowl is not your base or your protein. It's all the little extras, you know? So I don't have many things on hand that I typically would add to a bowl, but I do have a few and so I'll show you. I love putting hummus on a bowl and making it like a Greek style. We, we absolutely love smearing hummus on one side and then I'll make a like a cucumber and tomato relish and put it on. So it's kind of going, I think I just said this, but it's like Greek. And with that one, I love topping it with tzatziki sauce. Usually I always have a, um, store-bought tzatziki but I happen to be out but someone I follow on Instagram put up a homemade recipe I need to give that a go but another thing we like to do especially if we're trying to do a um, Mexican style bowl is we make a sriracha crema and that's just low-fat sour cream with um, sriracha to your taste and then I thin it out with a little bit of water but really with sour cream I mean you can add lemon or lime some seasonings the zest of a lime and make a lot of different cremas for sour cream to drizzle on bowls and that makes it different. That's what makes it different than eating a salad in my opinion. Um, another thing that makes a good bowl is just having some good cheese. I, I like cheese, so what can I say? Can't go wrong. What's some other things that add to a bowl? Oh, I would say I mentioned the cucumber and tomato like um, pickled. I also love adding pickled onions. I think that is a big part of a bowl is having that contrast of different um, tastes and textures or whatnot. So if I don't pickle onions or cucumbers, I'll have like a, a carrot slaw, something like that. Something to mix up the variety of your bowl so it's not like mush on mush or one flavor profile. Like even when we do um, Mexican style bowls, you know, I like to have a fresh pickle de gallo on there, something like that. So number two is bowls. My number three go-to dinner type is stuffed vegetables. I absolutely love stuffed vegetables and there's multiple reasons. One, I think it can be very affordable and it makes a lot, which kind of brings me to number two reason. It makes a lot, so therefore I have leftovers. Therefore I don't have to cook again that week. Well, I mean, maybe some point, but you get my point. But anyway, so there's definitely um, a number one winner with me in stuffed vegetables and it is stuffed bell peppers. I absolutely love stuffed bell peppers, and I mainly make them Mexican style. However, I have done this Italian style before, and we like both. I just typically lean Mexican style because that's what we like the most. And with that, I just do ground up lean turkey or chicken. You could even do hamburger meat, but you know, to keep it zero points, I like that ground chicken over turkey. And then I'll add hearts of palm riced, or you can add cauliflower rice, either or, I like both. Or if you have the points, add regular rice, I've done that too. But for me, the main ingredient I absolutely love in my stuffed peppers is this specific enchilada sauce. I really like this one from Trader Joe's. I'm picky about my enchilada sauces. And if I remember right, this whole bottle is only four points, I'm pretty sure. So I have been known to make a bell, stuffed bell pepper 
that um, are like one or two points each for like a whole half. So you can have like a whole bell pepper and it's I think one or two points. You literally can get it down such low points. But I always stuff my um, stuffed bell peppers with fresh avocado on the top as well. Okay, so another thing we like to stuff is zucchini. Zucchinis work really well. I would think I do bell pepper more than zucchini because the zucchini is a little more laborsome. Um, the bell peppers make bigger and then the zucchini takes more prep time, if that is what you will. But I stuff them the exact same way. For some reason, when I do zucchini, I lean more Italian side. Excuse me. And with that, instead of using the enchilada sauce, I'll use a low point marinara. Typically, I just use tomato sauce and I season it myself so that way it's zero points. And I leave out the rice when I do it Italian style. There's no rice at all. I feel like the zucchini's bulkier and you don't need that. Whereas in the stuffed peppers, sometimes you need that. Another vegetable that's really easy to stuff is um, eggplant squash or other types of squash. I've only done that a few times and I really, really do like it. But in those cases, I do it more like Thanksgiving, like more of like a stuffing mixture or something like that. But another thing, and I wasn't sure if it counted as stuffing a vegetable or not, but I decided it was, and we go to it quite a bit, and that is chicken lettuce wraps. We absolutely love chicken lettuce wraps. It's another food that I can make super low in points. I do the 0% ground chicken, add a whole bunch of, um, Asian seasonings, hoisin, soy, that type of stuff. I add water chestnuts, carrots, mushrooms, green onions. So besides the sauces, that's really only thing you're counting points for. And I love making that as a dinner. And then I have it the rest of the week for lunch. I absolutely love chicken lettuce wraps. And a couple that I make are just like spot on for, what's that restaurant, Pia Chang. My number four go-to dinner is just different types of pastas. I, don't, I would say I'm not a huge pasta person. I love Italian food, but the pasta is not my favorite part of that. So I was actually surprised about how often we do eat pasta, but I realized we don't eat it very often in the traditional sense. Like I don't sit down and make a big uh, lasagna or a big thing of spaghetti. Rather, even when we make pasta, it's like as a, more of a side with a lot of vegetables. And I don't have anything to show you, but of course I'll put up multiple clips. But most of my go-to pasta is pasta alternatives. And obviously that's because I am on WW and I have been for a really long time. So I really like the hearts of palm, just like I showed you that box of rice. They have hearts of palm noodles. We really, really like that. The only thing about that I will say is you have to use quite a few boxes to bulk it up. It's just not a lot there. And then we love gnocchi. We love the cauliflower gnocchi from Trader Joe's. And then we other we love other traditional gnocchis. Um, we, my husband and I both just really like gnocchi. And with that, we typically will do some type of Italian sausage, usually a chicken sausage and we cut it up and throw it in the air fryer for a few minutes or just saute it in the sauce on the stove. We typically always do like some type of healthy sausage when we do pasta, I realize. Or we will do um, grilled chicken, of course. And then the other protein we do a lot with pasta is, what do we do? That is one of the few times when we do ground pork is because if we do a straight spaghetti, we really, really love ground pork, spicy Italian sausage in our um, red sauce, and but we bulk it up with vegetables. We put a ton of kale in our red sauce. So. I think that's it, but either, even when we eat regular pasta, we're eating a healthy version, wherever it's Fireboard Gourmet or um, a Protein Plus pasta, a whole wheat pasta, we're doing something to lessen the points and I also on pasta just lessen my portion. And pasta, I can't tell you the points because it's really gonna be highly, highly variable on which one you pick. But if all your points go in the pasta, say you're even eating six to 10 points a night of pasta, as long as you have a veggie that obviously is gonna be zero points and then a protein, a fish, a chicken that's zero, 
or even a low point option, it's still like only a 12 to 13 point dinner night. You understand what I'm saying? And if you want to throw in a carb for a bread, an additional carb, I'd say you can do that as well. And on the nights I want to throw in a bread because I'm having pasta, I make sure I have a zero point protein. So that way the meal isn't crazy in points. Any guess what my fifth go-to meal diet is for dinner? You probably guessed it, sheet pan meals. And I feel like this is really popular on YouTube. At least it was a couple years ago. And at first I wasn't a huge fan because I'm not even a fan of crock pot meals. I feel like when you cook everything together, it's just a lot of times taste one note throughout the whole meal. So I was hesitant, but right when I started WW, I, I can't remember the person's name, I apologize. But I watched a video where she did uh, chicken fajitas and I was like, man, that sounds so easy. Cause when you make fajitas, it is easy. You throw the meat on the grill, saute the onions, but then you have the rice, and you have the beans and all that. Whereas she did it and just, she lined all the chicken up, all the um, onions, excuse me, all the roasted, or they weren't roasted, all the raw bell pepper. And she just threw it in the oven with seasoning on it. And when she pulled it out, it looked amazing. I was like, okay, I gotta try that. And sure enough, it is absolutely delicious. They do taste different than grilled fajitas, but to me, they're both good. And it saved me getting like three dishes dirty. So that way I just did like a microwave thing of rice for my husband. I don't like Mexican style rice, so that's all him. And I made homemade guacamole and we were good to go. So that's what first got me curious about sheet pan meals. And from then I've been doing several others. A lot of them have to do with peppers for some reason. But I like this Italian style one where you cut up a lot of sausage. Um, a lot of, I've done it with turkey kebab. Sorry, my dog's over there trying to eat a plant. Rio, leave that plant alone. Okay, sorry. But I've, I've done it with turkey kielbasa or any other type of uh, healthier sausage alternative. And then you just do a potato, dice up a potato and whatever vegetable of your choice. With that one, oh, sorry. With that one, we also like to do peppers, peppers, potato, and um, some type of sausage. It makes a really good hash. And I've even done it where I then like fry an egg to put on the top. So that one's a go-to of ours. We've done it for fish, for fish tacos before. I did like a coleslaw and then just the baked fish. And then what did I put over here? I don't remember. Oh, maybe some grilled onions or something. Basically, it's a fish taco. It's almost like a fajita with fish, right? It's the same thing. Uh, what else have I done on sheet pan? Let me look at my note. Oh yeah, one of my favorites. Darn it, I almost forgot. I absolutely love kebabs where you have like the vegetables on the skewer and then the meat, and usually you have some sort of glaze. If you do kebabs, they take forever, especially if you're doing a lot of them, to skewer them, cut everything up. So after I started doing a few sheet pan meals, I had everything ready and I was about to start kebabbing it. And I was, it was a Sunday, it was late. I was like, I am too tired. So I just did my chicken, my peppers, my, uh, that kebab was chicken, peppers, pineapple, and there was something else. Oh, red onion. So I laid all that out and it was wonderful. And I don't think I've kebabbed anything since. I've even done it on the pit on like one of those hot mats just to get rid of skewering the damn things. But yeah, that's a go-to. And I know I have a video of that one. Yeah, chicken, pineapple, red bell pepper, and red onion. Oh my goodness, with, let me show you the sauce. Well, I lied, I don't have any in the sauce. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'll try to find it and put a picture, hopefully. I can't remember who it's by, but it's just this low point teriyaki sauce. I absolutely love it, so hopefully. And it's not just like a watery sauce, it's definitely a glaze. So hopefully I can find it and put it on the screen. Okay, and I have to do a little bonus section for the dinner portion, just because it wouldn't be fair, because we do eat convenience meals quite a bit. I mean, we both work and we work far from the house and we spend a lot of our time after work working out. So um, yeah, you gotta have some convenient meals. And granted, I don't have a mini of them on hand right now, but I would say most of the time, we're eating some sort of Asian Trader Joe convenience meal. And when we do that, we uh, love to have their chicken cilantro mini wontons. You can have four of these for one point. They're amazing. We also like their goiza. Those are great. 
And I think it's only like two points for two, three maybe. And their egg rolls are great and they're only four points each. But when we make their meals, these are the Asian style vegetables, the stir fry vegetables I bought at Costco to bulk up any Asian meal. Even if I'm cooking it myself, these are my go-to vegetables. I absolutely love these suckers. I couldn't find them a couple months ago and I almost cried. Another thing that I would say in the last 20 years, 30 years, how old am I? Okay, let's just say since I've been out of my parents' house, I am not sure I've ever been without a bag of frozen french fries and a bag of chicken nuggets. Yes, I have progressed from the Tyson to better nuggets. They've changed. I like the kid fresh ones. These I actually haven't tried, but I'm super excited to try them. Um, I've also tried the knockoff Chick-fil-A in the like red bag from Sam's Club. Those are pretty good. But yeah, so you just have to keep that on hand, in my opinion, because I am not a person that I'm going to eat clean or whole every day. I do enjoy eating like that, but let's be realistic. Sometimes it, it I just can't make it happen. So anyhow, those are all my dinner meal ideas. I feel like it seemed like everything was like ready to go, but I promise you, if you watch my what I eat in a day, I cook, I cook a lot. Some meals are way more intense than others. I've really, I love cooking new foods. I love trying new foods, but I would say in the past year or two, I've definitely reined that in because of time. Instead of spending time cooking, I am now folks spending my time on working out and that means eating more simplified meals. That's just how it's went. We used to not eat leftovers during the week. It was rare for us to have leftovers. I cooked five to six nights a week and then we ate out one and they were all different meals. I've gotten now during the work week, I try to cook on Sunday and it have enough for leftovers. And then I only try to cook one more big meal and then one convenient, ready to go, pretty easy meal like pizza, nuggets, something like that. So I really just don't try to cook that much anymore because I don't have the time to devote to the kitchen. It's not for lack of wanting to or loving to, but that's it. And I feel like it is easier point wise if you kind of do stuff on repeat somewhat, even if it's not the same meal, it's the same types of meal, it's easy to stay within your points because you know what they are, right? So that is it. I hope this video has been helpful. I know it was delayed and I apologize. Hopefully I can edit it and get it to you quickly. Um, I'm tempted to do a part four dessert series, but I don't make a lot of desserts, so that one could be difficult. So we shall see. If this is the end of this series, thanks for sticking around. If not, you may see a part four pop up on my video, um, my channel, who knows. But you'll for sure see like my top snaps coming and whatnot. I'm excited to do that, but there's so many of them. And I feel like then I have to go to the store and buy them all at once. So it's going to cost me a fortune, right? Oh, well. Bye. Love y'all.